So how's everyone doing? My name is Jeb, and today I'm going to be teaching you how to write your own bucket plugin to create Minecraft challenges like several popular Minecraft creators, including Dream, George Not Found, and Fundy. To do this, I'm going to be walking you through the development of the plugin I used in my most recent video that kills all players on the server when only one of them dies. If you haven't seen that video yet, check it out by clicking on the button in the upper right corner of the screen. But for now, let's get into it. Do you hear that? Before we get started, let's go over what you're going to need for this tutorial. Firstly, you're going to need an IDE that has Maven integration. I'm going to be using Eclipse, which is freeware, so feel free to download it and follow along. You're also going to need basic knowledge of Java, specifically on the topics of methods, inheritance, instancing, and classes. If you don't know what these mean yet, there are plenty of free tutorials online that can get you caught up. I also highly recommend familiarizing yourself with the Spigot API through its Java docs before beginning. I've left a link to this in the description below. All right, so now let's take a minute to think about how this plugin is actually going to work. To do so, we first need to understand the idea of what an event is. In the Spigot API, an event is an object that is automatically created whenever a thing happens in the game world. This can be anything from an explosion, to an entity taking damage, to blocks being placed or broken, etc. You can read the full list of events on the official Spigot documentation, again, which I've linked in the description below. The one we're interested in for the purposes of this tutorial is the player death event. Now the cool thing about events is that they can have an associated event handler, which is also called a listener. And this is nothing more than a block of code that executes whenever a certain event is created. Remember, events are created automatically when things happen in the game world. So the main idea behind this plugin is that we're going to write a listener that listens for the player death event. When this event is detected, the listener will fire and run a block of code that kills every other player on the server. While this is a very simple example of how a listener can be used, the idea of using listeners to modify the game can be built upon to allow essentially unlimited customization. If you're familiar with my Apocalypse series, which you can check out by clicking on the button in the upper right corner of the screen, the plugin that was used in the video was nearly entirely based on an event handler that listened for monster spawns. All right, so now that you're set up with your IDE, it's time to create a project. We're going to create a Maven project so we can easily build the jar with a reference to the Spigot API. And so the first step is to create a Maven project, however you do that in your IDE. I'm using Eclipse, so I'm just going to select Maven project. I'm gonna create a simple project. And we get to this screen here where we can define a group ID and an artifact ID. By convention, your group ID is some domain that you own in reverse. So for example, if I had a website that was jebblitz.com, my group ID would be com.jebblitz. If you don't have a website, you can use a GitHub or SourceForge account, or even an email address, just as long as you follow that naming convention. For this example, I'm gonna be using my GitHub account, which is jebblitz.github.io. So my group ID name is going to be io.github Jeblets. And for your artifact ID, you're just going to input whatever you want to call your plugin. So for this example, I'm going to be developing a plugin called Soulbound, so my artifact ID is going to be Soulbound. And once you're done with that, click Finish. So now we have to reference the Spigot API through Maven. And to do that, we're going to open the new project that we just created and enter the pom.xml file. Once we're in the pom.xml file, we need to add two snippets of code from online sources. The first source is the official Spigot website, and this block of code takes care of importing the Spigot API into your Maven project. The second block of code is from the official Bucket Plugin Tutorial website, and it allows you to specify the version of Java that you're going to be building your plugin with. On Eclipse, the default version is set to Java 5, whereas at the time of this tutorial, the current version of Java is Java 8. So we just want to make sure to update that before we continue. So to update the Java version, we're going to come down to where it says 1.7 here, and we're just going to change that to 1.8. If you happen to be developing for a server that you know uses Java 7, then you're gonna to wanna to keep this as Java 7. Otherwise, change it to Java 8. Now, if you happen to be developing a plugin that's for a different version of Minecraft than the most recent release, you're gonna to wanna to change that in this version line here. 
So it currently says Minecraft 1.16.3. If you were, for example, developing a plugin for Minecraft 1.8.9, you would just change this to 1.8.9. I'm going to be developing for 1.16.3, so I'll just change that back. Now, once you save this pond.xml file, if you're using Eclipse, you're going to get an error. And that's caused by the fact that the Eclipse project is not up to date with the Java version specified in the pond.xml. To fix it, you have to change the project configuration to match whatever Java version you input. In this example, it's Java 8. In Eclipse, this is fortunately very easy. Right click quick fix, and then click finish. Now, this has changed the formatting of the pom.xml file, and if this bothers you, you can fix it by pressing Control or Command A, and then the keyboard shortcut Control or Command Shift F, and that will reset the file to the default formatting, and everything is where it should be now. All right, so our setup in the pom.xml file is done. I'm just gonna save it, and now it's time to create the main package. We wanna create this package in the src slash main slash java folder. These folders all have very similar names, so just make sure you're using the right one. Our package is going to have the same name as our group ID with our artifact ID appended at the end. Now, if you've forgotten your group ID and artifact ID, you can check it out by accessing the pom.xml file and it's listed on the top here. So for this example, my group ID is io.github.jebblitz and my artifact ID is soulbound, so my package name is going to be io.github.jebblitz.soulbound. And once you've done that, click finish to create your package. Now it's time to create the main plugin class. And to do this, we're going to right click on the package and add a new class that has the same name of our artifact ID. In my case, it's going to be soulbound. This main class has to extend the Java plugin class in the Spigot API. So to do that, we're just going to add that to the top line of the plugin declaration. You'll get an error when you do this, so just import the Java plugin class from the Spigot API. And that's actually all we need to do for the main class for right now. So we can save it and then add a new class in the same package that is going to hold our listener. It doesn't really matter what you call it, just as long as you remember what it is. So I'm going to call mine player death listener. The listener class needs to implement the listener interface of the Spigot API, so make sure you add that. Like before, this is going to give an error, so just make sure to import the listener. Also, make sure you're importing the right one. Now, the constructor for this listener object needs to take a reference to the main plugin object. And the reason for that is because we need one of the methods to access the online players. So I'm just going to create a private instance variable that stores the main plugin object. And with this complete, it's time to actually implement the listener method. To do this, we're going to create a void method that is named on and then whatever event you're interested in. So, for example, in this case, I'm interested in the player death event, so my method's name is going to be on player death event. And it's gonna take one input, and that is a reference to the event object of the type of event that you're interested in. So altogether in code, this means we're going to be creating a method named on player death event, and that's gonna take one input, and that is an object of type player death event named event. Just make sure that you import everything that gives you an error. Now, because this method is actually an event handler or a listener, we need to add an annotation that specifies it as such. In the Spigot API, that annotation is at event handler. And you're gonna have to import it. So in this method, we can define the code that we want to run every single time a player dies. And that is basically to loop through the list of online players and set all of their health to zero. To get the list of online players, we're going to use the Java plugin method get server, and then the server interface method get online player list. And now we're just going to set their health to zero. If you'd like, you can also add a lightning strike effect that strikes at the location of the player's death as they're killed. And to do this, we're going to use the strike lightning effect method of the world interface. If you'd like more information about this method, you can reference the spigot Java docs. I'm just going to show you how it's implemented here. Now, let's take a minute to think about how this code is actually going to run. A player is going to be in the world, and if they die, that's going to trigger this event handler to loop through and kill all of the other players on the server. The problem is that as this event handler loops through and kills all of the other players, it's going to call its own player death event and start the loop over again. 
On smaller servers with just a few players, this shouldn't really be an issue, but it may have unintended consequences on larger servers where there are a lot of players. Plus, it's always good practice to make sure that your code actually does what you want it to do and nothing else. So to fix this, we need to add a variable that stores whether or not we want to ignore deaths in the short term. So basically what's gonna happen is the first player is going to die. We're then going to set deaths to be temporarily ignored. We're gonna loop through all the players on the server and set their health to zero. And then we're gonna set that variable such that any future death isn't ignored. To do that, we need to add this variable to our main class. And since this is a private instance variable, we need to add methods to set and retrieve it. So once we've done that, let's head back to the listener and actually implement this check. If it doesn't make sense to you how this code was implemented, I highly recommend pausing the video and going through the logic yourself. Otherwise, the last thing we need to do is head back into the main class and register this event listener. So the way we're gonna do this is utilizing the onEnable method, which is a void method that runs as soon as the plugin is loaded. To actually register the event, we're going to use the register events method of the plugin manager interface, which can be obtained using a method from the server interface. Now the register events method takes two inputs. The first is our listener object, and the second is our plugin object. Since we're in the main plugin class, we're going to use the this keyword to specify the plugin. Now the final step in development is to add a plugin.yml file. This is necessary because it contains various information about your plugin that must be specified in order for Spigot to recognize the jar file you build as a bucket plugin. To do this, we're going to add a new file to the src slash main slash resources folder. Again, just make sure that you create it in the right folder. All right, so once we're in the plugin.yml file, we need to specify the plugin's name, the path to its main class, the API version, and the plugin's version. The plugin's name should just be your artifact ID. The main class is going to be your package name dot your artifact ID. Notice that soulbound is written here twice and that's not a typo. My package name is io.github.jebblitz.soulbound and my main class name is soulbound. So that main class name is actually appended to the very end of the package name. If you don't remember what your package name and main class are, you can check them by looking in the project on the left side of the screen here. The API version is the major version of Minecraft for which you are developing your plugin, and it should match the one that you set in the pom.xml at the very beginning of this tutorial. In my case, I'm developing a plugin for Minecraft 1.16.3, so my API version is going to be 1.16. And finally, we need to specify a version for this plugin. If you had a more complicated plugin that had different features and builds and releases, then you're gonna to wanna to look into the version naming convention. For the simplified case of this tutorial, we're just going to use version 0.0.1. And with that, all we have to do is save it. And now it's time to actually build this jar. To do so, we're going to right click on the plugins project, select run as, and then Maven install. If you see build success like on the bottom here, you know that you did everything correctly. The plugin jar is saved by default in the target subfolder of your project folder, which you can find by looking at this line above build success. And with that, all that's left to do is load the plugin up into a server and check that it works properly. So now that we're in a server, you can see that the plugin is functioning properly and that's all there is to it. You have successfully written a bucket plugin. And so that's gonna do it for this video. Thank you so much for watching. As always, if you ended up enjoying this video and would like to see more in the future, you can always subscribe. It's completely free and will give you access to all future content. Also, I value all feedback, both positive and negative. So please tell me what you thought in the comments below. And as always, my name is Jeb and I'll see you on the other side.